Hello and welcome to Reality TV Cringe. I am one of your hosts, Delia, here with my real tight homegirl and my daughter-in-law, Beatrice. What's up, everybody? We are here gathered tonight to talk about The Valley mm-hmm. Season 1, Episode 3, and I got some shit to say on my heart. She's triggered. About this Jesse Lally guy. Yeah. Oh, but we'll get into it. Before we do, we want to give you the disclaimer. We got to tell you every time, honey, hide your wife and hide your kids. This is a politically incorrect podcast. We say bad words. We have our own opinions. Sometimes they're great. Sometimes they're not. And so if you're sensitive, you might want to find yourself another dumpster. But if you are ready to get into this trash tonight, Mm. welcome to this dumpster. And if you are a fan of trash like we are, go follow us on Instagram at Reality TV Cringe and join us on Patreon, patreon.com slash Reality TV Cringe. That's where all of the trash is, all the bonus trash, everything you can imagine. And if you are watching on YouTube, please don't forget to like and comment and share and subscribe. Truly, everything you do helps us to grow on YouTube and helps us to attract more raccoons yeah. into the dumpster. Yeah. So thank you in advance thank you okay so before we get into the episode i have to ask you do you have any major takeaways or thoughts about what you watched everybody sucks everybody's a liar (laughs) everybody gossips everybody's fake that's my takeaway just like vpr are are you enjoying it though yeah i'm i'm liking no it's like juicy i'm just saying like everybody's a liar because it's fucking la if you had to choose between the valley and vpr in terms of entertainment which one do you like more So far, VPR, but only because of like Scandaval, because I think that's just like crazy and just intense. Like I'm waiting for Valley to kind of get to that level because I feel like I foresee (laughs) in my fake psychic prediction that it's going to get crazy. Yeah. Especially with like the impending breakups and stuff like that. Like I'm excited for that. And it's already popping off in episode three. So I'm like, okay, give me more of this. Okay. Yeah. Well, my takeaway is that I actually don't think everybody's a liar. I think Kristen is telling the truth. And what I mean specifically is I think she's telling the truth that Zach told her that Janet told Jasmine that Michelle was a Republican slash racist Uh slash homophobe. Like, I think that actually was said to Kristen. And I think she's telling the truth about it. Now, did she commit a social faux pas by like bringing it up at a party at Michelle's house? Absolutely. It was inappropriate. She didn't need to say that. Also, if Zach is one of your very best friends, why are you throwing him under the bus? It doesn't make sense. Right. But that's Kristen for you. Yeah. I think Janet called her crazy Kristen tonight and she can get triggered and she can act inappropriately but I think she's telling the truth secondly one of my major thoughts was about Zach's hair because I don't know what's happening he seems like a young man so it doesn't seem to me that he would like have a toupee full on but it kind of looks like a toupee looks like a rug right on the top of his head girl I don't know if it's a toupee or hair plugs or what but I'm like dude your hairline is not here no, it's what is not. that? <laughs> like right at the top of your eyebrows. And it's so stiff. It's like, what are you doing? Yeah. Well, maybe he has like really thick curly hair and he's just trying to tame it into submission. But I'm just like, mm. it is bizarre. It looks like it's fake. It looks like it's a toop. Yeah. And he's a young man. He don't need a toop. Well, maybe he's balding. My dad went bald at 22. Really? Yeah. He went bald at 22. Oh so gosh. sometimes, but my dad owned it. Like he's like, I'm just going to shave my fucking head. Right. And he's just been a bald guy ever since. I respect that. Yeah. And everybody loves him for it. And there's nothing wrong with it. But like, then you have the opposite end of the spectrum with these other guys like Zach and Cody Brown, who are so insecure about losing they their hair. They cannot let go. They cannot. Of the illusion of hair. Yeah. It's really bad. Zach, I'm cringing. I know. I don't know what's going on. So those were my primary thoughts. Let's get into the episode. Let's get into it, bitch. Well, we start with Jax and Brittany at Why the I gotta farmer's be a market. Because well, right at the top, we're both Why bitches. I gotta be a bitch. I'm a bitch. You're a bitch. Everybody's a bitch. Okay. All right. <laughs> Jax and Brittany are at the farmer's market, and they're already talking shit about the night before. Yeah. The girls' night. So like. This is my only critique of this episode. I'm like, why couldn't we have seen the footage? A hundred percent. Like, we know the cameras were there. Yeah. They were filming the entire night. Like, why wouldn't they have shown us the entire argument? I feel robbed. 
Me too. I'm like, what it the also fuck? doesn't make any sense from like a production standpoint. Yeah. That you wouldn't show this huge fucking fight and with Zach screaming in the kitchen. Right. I didn't say that. Like, why didn't we get to see any of that except in a flashback? That makes no sense. It makes absolutely no sense. Because didn't they say to be t- continued? Like, wasn't it like a whole yes. thing? So I'm like, okay, what? So now we're at the farmer's market with Jackson Brittany acting all suburban and right. get with their baby or whatever, getting tomatoes. Like, okay. It was completely weird. I thought we would pick up right where we left off still at the party. And mm-hmm. I'm really disappointed that we didn't. I know. We just get the recaps from Jax and Brittany in their own voices. Like right. Jax talks about the guy's night and being like, yeah, fucking Luke popped off on me because I brought Kristen's ex. Like he's just being all pissed off about it. And then Brittany's like, yeah, I told Kristen <laughs> yeah. that you brought uh her ex over and she popped off and freaked out. And then, then this is where Brittany kind of recaps the night before where she She's talking about this big old rumor that or this big old bomb that Kristen dropped off, which is Kristen shouting, well, Janet told me or Zach, Janet and Zach told me that Michelle's a racist Republican or something like that. Mm -hmm. And then Zach's like, I never said that. And that's where we saw that preview that we didn't get to see the rest of the footage of. Thank you, Bravo. So, yeah, Brittany and Jax are trying to set up the conflict that they know is coming up Mm -hmm. and Jax is like yeah Kristen shouldn't have said that Mm -hmm. Brittany agrees and they just feel like puppeteers to me right you just feel like they're on the outskirts trying to make different scenes happen yeah and I'm really not interested in them at all this season I really don't like Brittany I don't know why she's riding so hard for Jax I know that's her husband but he he his behavior is so bad Mm -hmm. it is indefensible and yet here comes britney on her bullshit every time defending this asshole and she'll throw Kristen under the bus in order to do so yeah so i'm yeah that's my that's my thought about that scene i didn't like either of them me neither and i'm like why are you producing the show for the producers yeah like it's very interesting to me I don't Do you know remember why. like in the aughts? I know you were much younger, but like we had shows like America's Next Top Model, which absolutely was toxic. Yeah. We had shows like Bad Girls Club. We love. had shows like fucking Flavor of Love. We love. had all these shows that were so much like more authentic yeah. and organic. And even though they were preposterous and they were definitely bottom of the barrel people in different scenarios i enjoyed them much more me too because we're seeing actual reactions to things that are happening and the cameras are picking them up yeah this just feels cobbled together put together for some kind of a show yeah because they want money it it just feels like that to me like for britney and jacks if they're the ones like producing all of this and they're the headliners of it i'm like are y'all hurting for money and you want to be like VPR because you can't go back on VPR because you're losers? (laughs) Well, I thought maybe they were doing well because I thought, wow, Jack's bought this bar in Studio City. But then we learned that he didn't put any money into it. He's got investors. He's just got the name. So yeah, I don't don't think they're doing that great for money. And I think they're absolutely looking for opportunities in television. Clout goblins. That's why they're trying so hard to manufacture drama. Mm-hmm. To be to make it interesting. Yeah. And I mean, granted, this drama that they're manufacturing is kind of interesting because it starts off right off the bat. Mm-hmm. So then after the farmer's market, we get over to um, Maje- Michelle and Jesse's house. And this is where Michelle's like, I can't believe Kristen such a bitch that she would say that I'm a Republican and that I'm racist because, I mean, first of all, if I'm a Republican, who cares? Second of all, I'm not fucking racist. She's like first generation Persian and, and Persian. So it's like, she's like, I'm not fucking racist. It's stupid. And Jesse's like, yeah, it's fucking bullshit. And then this is where Michelle calls Janet because Kristen said Janet said that Michelle was a Republican and racist. So she's like, I'm going to call Janet and confirm right. whether or not this was true. Right. And so Janet's like, um, I never said that. I never said the word racist. I never would. I wouldn't be your friend if you were a racist. This is just Kristen Doty doing the fuck shit that Kristen always does. And now I have a real problem with Kristen. But I was watching her. I was watching Janet on the phone, on the FaceTime. And you know, I got a vibe, vibe check. Vibe check. I was just like, mm, I feel like you talked some shit actually. Maybe you didn't use the word racist. Maybe you didn't use the word homophobe, but like I'm feeling that you actually did some of that shit. Mm-hmm. And I also feel like she knew before the call came in that they were going to be talking about this. So she had prepared herself. Yeah. So she wasn't caught off 
guard. Yeah, she's a lawyer's wife. She knows how to fucking mm-hmm. mitigate and t- turn it around so that she's not in trouble. But I'm right. like, I think you were spreading some shit. And I think when we talk about the fact that Kristen didn't say the shit, mm-hmm. that Kristen is actually friends with Michelle at this point. She didn't start the rumors. It was somebody else. I think what Kristen really did wrong in terms of Michelle and Jesse is that she said this on camera. Yeah. So now you created a thing. Now you called their reputation into question and they're going to have to defend themselves. Like I think if Kristen would have said this without cameras, it wouldn't have been this huge of a deal for Michelle. No, not at all. Yeah, if it was just in the social circles and it was just gossiping and whatever in a game of telephone like everybody's referring it to, then fine. But it was on camera, although we didn't get to see it all. We just got to see the flashback. I'm still salty about it. Yeah. But yeah, it's very interesting how this gets out. And it's such a big accusation to all these people in L.A., of course, Mm -hmm. because they're in this like very liberal Mm -hmm. social scene where that is like so taboo. I mean, later, Zach calls it and he's like it's social suicide if you are a republican if you're outed as that and i'm like yeah it's true because it's fucking la right but yeah very interesting scene with her calling janet and janet's like no i never said that Mm. Mm -hmm. well we hear a bit more of an explanation from janet um which corroborates my hunch that there was something that was said yeah she just tries to flesh it out in a little bit of a different way but we'll get there when we get there yes we will get there and then we have luke and Kristen in her new apartment which is down the hall it's only 73 dollars more a month but it's like way bigger way more luxurious it's so great whatever they're moving into it and then they start talking about what happened at the girls and the guys nights luke's like yeah i mean at least jack's pulled me aside to mm-hmm. tell me he was bringing your doe boy ex-boyfriend over there, <laughs> but it was still a bit of a blind side. It was still pretty fucked up. And then Kristen's like, yeah, I feel really bad about saying what I said about Michelle at the girls night, because now it's caused this whole big old thing. I don't want to make Michelle feel like I'm putting her under the bus, or throwing her under the bus. I'm like, well, you kind of are. Yeah. Like a little bit. And Logan's like, yeah, I mean, you just don't want to weaponize things that people tell you because like that's not the right thing to do with your friends and uh, we have Kristen admitting that she did weaponize it but that she was triggered and so she was just like throwing things out because she was so upset but like that's no excuse so Kristen does seem to acknowledge that she was wrong but at the same time it appears that both Luke and Kristen validate that this shit was said to them not just Kristen it was said to them by Zach Right. Which I think is important because if it were just Kristen who heard it from Zach, then it's much easier to call her a total liar. But with somebody like Luke, who kind of seems like a hayseed, who kind of seems like he has a moral compass. Yeah. I feel like it's harder to say it was a lie. So I think we're going to see some of that going forward. I hope that we do. Oh, yeah. And I think this is also where in her interstitial, Kristen's interstitial, she says that there was a lot of talking shit Mm -hmm. before production even started. And so now that the cameras are on, everybody wants to put on a face Mm -hmm. and pretend like none of that happened. But I'm honest and I'm going to say it, which I'm just like is interesting because I I appreciate her honesty. But at the same time, I'm like, Kristen, you know what kind of social group yeah. you're in, right? Like, you know, the kind of scene you're in. All these people are fake as fuck. Right. So they're not going to take lightly for you to be spreading the actual truth and what mm-hmm. they said about mm-hmm. each other on TV because they all got an image to right. maintain. You know, what we didn't talk about was Janet's interstitials when she was talking to Michelle because she was talking about her relationship with Kristen and how about a year ago she had put a boundary down with Kristen because Kristen was bitching about her ex-boyfriend, Alex. Mm -hmm. And she's like, I can't do this anymore. Something happened. I don't know what happened. But Janet's like, yeah, we can't do that anymore. And ever since then, according to Janet, Kristen has been talking about her and kind of throwing her under the bus. And then she talks about the relationship that Kristen had with Alex. And she's like, you know, I saw firsthand that Kristen did some shit to Alex. And Kristen even admitted like, yeah, this was wrong. I shouldn't have done it. But all of a sudden, once she meets Luke, oh, Alex is a narcissist. He took advantage of me. He's this bad person. And Janet straight up says, well, we were there. Yeah, that didn't happen. So So. is that like normal for Kristen's behavior to like always victimize herself and make everybody else out to be like, I think so. I think so. Kind of. And 
that kind of lent itself to this sort of sad feeling that I have with Kristen, like looking at her being 40 now, 41 years old, and she's still trying to find a good relationship. She's trying to build this life that she really wants, but she's still, I think, probably really toxic Mm. in relationships. She seems like she's still toxic. Mm -hmm. And um, I think she needs therapy. Yeah, it seems like it. I mean, even with all of this gossip stuff, it's like, okay, Kristen, Mm -hmm. (laughs) social, like you need to learn social cues a little bit and like not spread all of this crap around of people saying whatever. Just let it play out the way it's supposed to play out. You don't need to be like the truth teller that's saying, oh, well, Zach told me this or Janet told me that. Like, it's just going to create more of a problem. You know what I felt, though, was... Like, cause I'm, I'm really, well, I'm no pun intended. I'm lukewarm about Luke. I'm like, mm-hmm. oh, yeah. whatever. Yeah. Kind of basic white guy from Colorado. But I really love how he's ride or die. He like, is. Even though Kristen was completely out of line, he is standing 10 toes down and he's going to stick up for her. And then later when we get to the Capri party, we see that he is the first one to defend her. And I, I love that. Yeah. Like, even if she's fucked up, even if she's wrong, he's going to protect her. Mm -hmm. And I think there's something really sweet about that. Do I like toxic masculine men? (laughs) Maybe I do. How your husband is. Just very masculine. Like, no, let's fucking take this outside. Like, don't talk to her like that. Like, when Jesse says, shut the fuck up to Kristen. That was wild. And Luke's like, okay, it is on. Like, Mulan. Yeah. We are doing this thing. Yeah. And of course, Jesse doesn't because he's 5'4 and he doesn't want everybody to see the height differential between (laughs) him and Luke. Sorry, I hate it's him pretty so good. much. Anyway, I know I liked I liked Luke, even though Kristen was wrong. He was supportive. Yes, I liked it too. And then we have Jax going to his bar that he owns, I guess, but he doesn't invest any money into it. I don't know if he owns it though. Like I'm really very curious about how it's structured. He said he had three investors Mm -hmm. and he didn't put any money into it. All it is is his namesake. So I wonder like, does that mean he gets some sort of a kickback or does he get a portion? Kind of like Tom Tom, which is Lisa Vanderpump's bar, which is Tom Sandoval, Tom Schwartz's namesake. I think they put in 10% in order to have some ownership. I just wonder like how it's all working. You know, I'm always very fascinated by the coins. Oh, yeah. But when this dude was like, oh, yeah, I don't know. And I don't own anything or haven't invested in anything or whatever he said. He's like, but I got to help interview employees for it. And I'm like, really? Do you? <laughs> right. Do you? I think maybe what he brings to the table is cameras mm-hmm. and now a show yeah. and also He's obviously been on VPR, and so Cringe. they're hoping that they can leverage his celebrity in order to open the bar and be successful, which I hear that like it's open, and uh, unlike something about her yeah. from Vanderpump <laughs> Rules, I hear that it's open and that it's kind of a fun bar to go to. Well, that's good for them, I guess. Yeah. I'm, I'm sure he hired all of the busty bartenders that they interviewed. That woman who walks in with, no with her tits out. I mean, go for, go off. I mean, that's just fine. But... but like on the heels of that other like strictly businesswoman who walks in with like her portfolios uh-huh. and like all of her credentials, and this is my certificate, this is everything you need but she probably doesn't fit their physical idea of what they want yeah so they want hot brunette chicks. right they're never gonna hire her so then i guess a yeah. hot brunette chick comes in and makes them a lemon drop and they like it and they're like yeah it's so amazing you've got the look you got the tattoos the dark hair it's great right and i'm sure jack's fucked her later Ew. i'm sure <laughs> i really like, tried to like he's just like kind of alluding to that and his interstitial she's like oh yeah you know they're pretty and like this one girl walked in with no bra and i'm like yeah, but I noticed when he was talking to the girl with no bra, like he wouldn't look at her. He was looking up at the ceiling. Uh-huh. Like he was trying to do what I think he thinks is the right thing. Yeah, sure. By not ogling her. So maybe he's trying to be a good husband. Mm. I don't know, honey. I feel like he's cheating on Brittany. Okay. Like 100%. It's my vibe. All right. Bye, Jay. And then we have Brittany and Kristen going to get horchata. Yeah. And they're talking about the whole Republican racist debacle i was kind of surprised that they didn't have shit to ha- to hash out between them because it was Brittany and Kristen that were actually in the argument and we didn't see any of the resolution of that but they no. didn't even mention they didn't mention so they must it have at gotten all. over it i guess i mean they didn't even talk about she, Kristen didn't even talk about why she was upset with Brittany in the first place for defending jacks right for inviting her ex-boyfriend when mm-hmm. Luke was there it's just like so weird yeah I don't know what the editing is very bizarre I hope they don't continue that yeah 
throughout the series, but whatever. And this is where they're talking about the whole rumor in general. And Kristen's like, yeah, I mean, this is what I was told. It was alluded to. Maybe I shouldn't have like blurted it out. I feel bad about it. And Brittany's like, yeah, like I, I understand your intentions or whatever. And then Kristen at some point is like, well, let me call Zach mm-hmm. and confront him. And so then she puts him on speaker and yeah. she's like, can you tell me and confirm because Brittany's here that you told me that Michelle was Republican and racist. And he's like, no, I never said racist. I said Republican. Yeah. It's like, that did happen, yeah. but I never said racist. And then we have some weird interstitial with Zach talking about how Kristen is pulling out all these balls from the lottery. Like, I think what he's trying to say is that she's taking information from several conversations and coming up with a conclusion about the spirit of what was said. Right. Like he didn't know how to actually say that. But it sounds like the problem is you, though. You're the one relaying all of these various and sundry conversations to Kristen and then getting upset. Because she's drawing a conclusion and sharing it. Right. And you guys know what you're insinuating. Like, even if you didn't say the words racist yeah. or homophobic or whatever, you know what you're doing when you're saying shit like they're Republican and that the the don't say gay bill when we get into that. Like, mm-hmm. they know what they're doing with yeah. that. And so they're being kind of manipulative. And oh, 100%. I don't trust Janet at all. Oh, no, honey. me neither. She's very shady. Me neither. And I don't trust Zach either. Mm-mm. He's gossiping about all this shit 100%. and then getting mad because yeah. it's getting out. It's like, okay, this is he getting I, I think he's deflecting. I don't even think he's mad. I feel like he's just so mortified that everybody's finding out that he's gossiping about everybody there but oh that's probably what they love about him oh yeah for yeah. sure yeah i just thought that was interesting and then we have a scene with jesse and michelle going to some life coach or therapy yeah. or something yeah. mm-hmm. which i thought was interesting because they're kind of talking about their relationship and yes like their problems and their marriage because jesse's a fucking piece of shit yes Oh, my gosh. Well, and she's talking about how he's really hard on her. And we see that. And they actually even flash back to, I think she's making him an espresso or a coffee. And he's like, don't put too many, don't put too much milk in that. And she's like, okay. And she's making his coffee. She gives it to him. And he's like, there's too much milk in that. I have to dump this out. Oh, my God. The tone in which he's speaking to her after she's making something for him and bringing something for him. I'm just like, Jesus Christ soften i know be a little nice be a little kind and and the life coach is even saying like you you've got to learn how to give some warmth yeah give some kindness so that she can respond to you because evidently michelle has not been attracted to jesse for three years and nine months which is when i think she conceived her daughter isabella Mm -hmm. and she doesn't validate or confirm that she says it's been a long time though yeah and then in in his interstitial, he's like, oh, yeah, I watched Pornhub yesterday. That's what sex is I guess for that's me. what sex is. Yeah. Like, you're such a piece of shit. Implying they never have sex. Yes. And he's not fulfilled. And he just seems like really terrible. Like as a partner and as a father, like I feel like she's every single day regretting hooking up with him. Oh, yeah. Because 100%. maybe he can provide a home near the Chateau Marmont. Who the fuck cares if your galley kitchen also has your washer and dryer? Like right. whatever, lady. Whatever, yeah. But there's nothing underneath. No, nothing. And I mean, I think she, I can't remember if she said it to the life coach slash therapist or if she said it in her interstitial. She was talking about how like everything for Jesse has to be fucking perfect and everything is about an image and he wants their house to be pristine and not even look like they have kids. And I'm like, that's fucking toxic as hell. Mm -hmm. And I knew, I kind of picked up on that the last two episodes when he's just like talking about their chateau normal like the house near chateau also Marmont. yelling at her when she's doing laundry right. and trying to do things around the house and yes. telling her how to do it although he won't do it himself right he's so fucking pretentious and critical and it's all about his image and yeah. it's all about their business and it's all about the money and it's like so ridiculous why do you have a fucking kid with this beautiful woman by the way who's way out of your league because he's expecting her to take on absolutely everything the emotional load and all of the physical labor that is associated with the home because she's talking about in this session with a life coach like I'm lonely yeah I don't get to talk to adults much less my partner so he's never home Sad. he's out and he's selling houses he's probably schmoozing going to bars restaurants talking to people at night and she's alone taking care of Isabella and then when he is home this is the guy that he is he's yelling at her about the amount of milk that he puts in his coffee that he can make the fuck for himself or yelling at her about like not having everything together for her little party like he's just always yelling at her always why would she stay with him 
She should have left Again, I just have to, can we have the conversation like, Jesse, it's 2024. We've all had a lot of information about how to be kinder and gentler with our fellow brother and sister. Don't you know that the cameras are on my guy? Don't you know that they're picking up in your house and you're saying this shit to your wife on camera? How do you think that's going to affect your business? How do you think that's going to affect your reputation? Don't you know that you are on the verge of being canceled? And then... I don't know where I saw this. Maybe it was on the Reddits or maybe I heard this in an after show. But it seems that Jesse said some weird whack shit in a group chat with all of these people about something really derogatory. And it's going to come out this season. Yes. Yeah. So this Give is his to nature. To me, it's like if you're truly a narcissist mm-hmm. and your nature is to be poisonous like wouldn't you want a mask wouldn't you want to try and sell yourself as somebody different but he doesn't give a fuck he doesn't care who sees him to be the asshole that he is well and i don't even think he thinks he's an asshole because in the life coaching thing when the guy's telling him yeah be softer to your wife be nice to your wife he's like well at what point is it too much like I, if i'm being the nice guy for two months and i'm still not getting fucked and i'm still not getting my dick sucked then what's the point right and the life coach is like dude that's the problem you're right. too attached to the result and this is all transactional right and that's it, he doesn't see that he's like oh okay i guess but like he's not taking that to heart because he just thinks okay well now i gotta do more shit to get what i want why can't i just get my dick sucked why can't my wife just be the wife that I need her to be, which is perfect in every fucking way, doesn't talk, doesn't do anything, doesn't backtalk me and just always fucks me. Like, I'm that's just, the kind of guy I'm like is. perplexed and flummoxed because I can't imagine a 40 year old without like <laughs> rudimentary emotional intelligence to understand like how to be a better person in this world. But like, I think some people don't give a shit mm-hmm. about being good people in this world. Yep. You know, I think the reason that I expect it is because the people I surround myself with personally are good people. So I, it just, it, it, it fucking surprises me to see a piece of shit like that. Just putting it all on front street. I know. On Bravo, baby. I know. I'm like, you don't understand. You are going to be so hated. I went up on his Instagram. He's only got like 3,200 followers. Much Loser. less than us, by the way. Yeah. Much less than us. And um, people just in his comments already calling him out oh my god you're never gonna work again like, dude get the fuck off my tv dude oh you suck my like, this is the very beginning of what is gonna happen to you jesse and oh. it couldn't have happened to a nicer person i mean karma's a bit that's Shh. right good lord then we have janet and jason at their home and i thought this was kind of cute just this moment where janet walks into his office or whatever and she's like um the baby's craving mcdonald's i'm ordering it and he's like we have food at home and she's like i don't care <laughs> <laughs> I need McDonald's. I heard the baby speak to me <laughs> on a psychic level and say, we're hungry for McDonald's. That was I thought cute. that was cute. Yeah, it was. The only redeeming part of uh, Janet because mm-hmm. I think she's a gossiping hoe. Yeah. Um, but then she kind of clarifies on their whole like conversation about Kristen being Republican slash racist slash homophobe. I think she's telling it to Jason, Jason right? Mm-hmm. Where she's like saying um what was it it was something about the don't say gay laws yeah she was talking about a conversation that she was having with michelle and michelle said that the don't say gay law protects children and the way janet is spinning it she was just like oh no no that's not what it is and so she tried to have some sort of a conversation with Michelle at the time about that, but then subsequently had a conversation in addition with Jasmine, who is a person of color and also a bisexual. Mm -hmm. And so she mentioned to Jasmine, hey, you know, this is kind of what her viewpoint is about that. And so maybe if she brings it up to you, it could be a teachable moment. I doubt it. Uh I really doubt that that's how that came out, Janet. Yeah. I'm not buying that for a minute, but Mm -hmm. she's like, so maybe if she mentions it to you, now you have the information and maybe you can teach her because Mm -hmm. that's what Jasmine wants to do is perpetually teaching people about fucking homosexuality and bisexuality just go out and fucking learn on your own anyway going off on a diet drive but i didn't believe her version of that conversation i think the version of the conversation probably happened with michelle where michelle said something like that about the don't say gay bill or whatever out of florida but then i think janet took that and then conflated and assigned a lot of impressions to that and passed it on to Jasmine. And it was Jasmine who then talked 
to Zach about it, who is also a member of the LGBTQIA community. Yeah. And then it got to Kristen. So I don't believe Jasmine. I think Jasmine heard it from Janet in a fucked up way. Yep. And I think Zach heard it from Jasmine in a fucked up way, too. I agree. And even Janet in this interstitial or whatever she's saying, like, it's Kristen's fault. She conflated it. She's insinuating what I meant. And that's not what I said. It's like, no, that's what I was saying earlier. Like, she knew what she was saying Mm -hmm. when she said that shit to Jasmine of like, oh, the don't say gay bill. This is what Michelle said. Like, you knew what you were doing with that. Like, I don't I don't buy that for a minute. And she's setting Jasmine up to say, well, of course she didn't say that because Uh Jasmine knows that she went to Zach and talked shit too. Yeah. And so Zach is also incentivized to say, absolutely not. We never said that when they did, when Janet, I think, really did bring that energy to the conversations that she had. She's the one who's responsible for spreading it. It gets to Kristen. She's a dummy. She blurts it out. But now Kristen's going to have to bear the brunt and right. janet gets to sit there and say i'm disgusted I that you said that that's so when fucking janet up. you 100 percent implied that honey yeah 1000 yeah. percent. and it all of this is leading up to the capri dinner and yes. we have like a little scene with uh jesse and michelle talking about the capri dinner and he's like it's a sophisticated get together because everybody goes to capri in the summers I'm like, shut the fuck yeah, up. God. He's so fucking pretentious, like the worst kind of like mm-hmm. well off rich person where yeah. you just are doing it for the Probably status. not that well off though. No. Like it's trying all to come act. off as if he's rich, but probably not that rich. Yes. It's all for a write off. Yeah. One hundred percent. Yeah. And even Michelle calls him out. She's like, Stop calling it sophisticated. Cause I think she calls it a party. And he's like, It's not a fucking party. It's sophisticated. I'm like, oh my God. She's like, you don't have to say the word though. Let it just be that. It's fine. Don't have to describe it endlessly as that. People will pick it up if it's actually sophisticated. But by the time we get to the sophisticated party, like everybody's eating off of a buffet and (laughs) serving themselves. And so I'm like, is this sophisticated in a house that looks like every other fucking house in the hills Uh in LA? I'm sick of these big white boxes all of which look the same yes god these people are so self-congratulatory yes like we're in this beautiful sophisticated home i'm like you guys are clowns i know jesus clowns <laughs> you guys are losers i just can't with it so once we get to the capri dinner um i think it's jasmine her girlfriend melissa and zach that are on the way and that's when we find out she's bisexual yeah. and she's been with melissa eating her box for three years you didn't and I'm like, call that yes. out in a grand gay conspiracy no i did mm. i was not called i was not expecting that i was like hey good for you girls mm-hmm. that's great um and then they're wearing linen i don't yeah, they're know they're trying to dress into the italian theme and, and the sophisticated they theme. all arrive in their beautiful dresses and outfits and I think Kristen goes up to Michelle kind of in the beginning and she's like, hey, you look beautiful. And Kristen is obviously like tentative and concerned because obviously something terrible happened at Michelle's house. And so she's apologizing and Michelle is not super receptive to that. And Kristen says, hey, can we go talk? And Michelle's like, yeah, maybe later. Not right now. So she's giving her the cold shoulder. She's icing her out mm-hmm. and she's she's pretty pissed off. And I mean, I get it because it's her reputation that's being called to question. And she doesn't like that this is being outed like this. Because I, I don't know about you, but maybe um, Michelle is a little bit Republican. Maybe she <laughs> is a little bit like center, you know, right yeah. or whatever. And maybe she didn't want that to get out. Because I mean, if she's saying anything, I don't know. I'm not insinuating anything. She says she's not a Republican. Nor are we casting judgments about either no, or. We don't talk politics don't on this podcast. I don't give a shit. It's just she's very defensive about it. And I understand it because like Zach said, being a Republican in LA is social suicide. And it's like really taboo. And like you better hide forever under the rocks if you are an actual mm-hmm. Republican. So it's it's just like, I get it, but she's a little too defensive is what I'm trying to say. She is defensive, but it also feels to me like she knows what's going to happen at the dinner. So she doesn't mm-hmm. really have to have a meaningful conversation with Kristen because she's already setting Kristen up right. for the confrontation that's going to come. I believe personally that she's already talked to Janet and already talked to Jasmine and they're going to, as a group, confront Kristen. Ah, that so makes sense. this is the takedown of Kristen yes. and Michelle is a part of it. So that's why she's being cold. Yes. That's my perception on it. Your fake psychic yeah, perception. Yeah, my fake, fake psychic perception. So then everybody sits down for this beautiful, sophisticated dinner that they all had to serve themselves. Mm-hmm. And fairly quickly, the issue pops off because yeah. I think Kristen can hear Janet and Brittany 
talking shit across the table. And mm-hmm. I think she says something like, is this really appropriate to be discussing at dinner? And then Janet just starts popping off. And she's like, well, why don't we just talk about this? Because apparently at a party where I was not, things were attributed to me. And I didn't actually say them. And Michelle's like, yeah, let's just talk about it in public since we were talking about it in public before. Uh huh. And so this is where Janet says, I heard that you told Michelle that I called her a racist and a Republican. And Kristen immediately says, that's not from me. That's from Zach. Zach's like, I never said that. Lies. And it lies. Mm-hmm. And then Kristen like was shocked because that's supposed to be like one of her very best friends yeah and if zach actually said that to her in that moment he should have owned it Mm -hmm. but because he didn't janet goes on to say i don't believe you Kristen, because jasmine said it didn't happen and zach said it didn't happen and i know i didn't say it so i think you're lying Mm. and Kristen starts getting really upset this is where jesse then starts to get involved and he calls out Kristen for straight up lying he calls her a liar and he's doing it in a very aggressive way luke immediately is like calm down yeah like maybe you can say the things that you want to say we can have this conversation we can work it out but like bring your energy all the way down yeah and jesse just says don't tell me to fucking calm down in my own house (sighs) okay whatever right which is really stupid yeah And then everybody's telling each other to like shut the fuck up and Luke's telling him to shut the fuck up. He's telling Luke to shut the fuck up. And then at some point though, Jesse actually tells Kristen to shut the fuck up because Kristen's trying to defend herself. And trying to apologize a little bit. Right. Yeah. Actually, I skipped right over that because after Janet said what she said, she's like, yeah, let me take this opportunity to apologize because I never should have said any of that. Yeah. It shouldn't have happened the way it did and I'm really sorry. But that's when Jesse calls her a liar. And then him and Luke start going into it. Yeah. And then he tells Kristen to shut the fuck up when Kristen is trying to defend herself. Mm. And when he tells Kristen to shut the fuck up, that's when Luke stands up. And right or wrong, and as I said, I feel like he's you know, a basic guy. Yeah. But the fact that he's standing up and he's saying, let's take this outside, you short little fucking munchkin <laughs> punk. Let me show you what's yeah. up outside. Yeah. Um, I think is respectable. Yeah. And Jesse says, just sit down. He's not going to get up. He's not going to fight. He's no. a pretty boy. He doesn't want to fight. Of course. And um, after that, I think we have Nia a little bit defending Kristen. And in Nia's interstitial to the camera, she's like, she's trying to apologize. Yeah. Nobody's listening to her. Nobody's giving her the benefit of the doubt. To the table, Nia is saying, like, what? everybody else is thinking which is this is a game of telephone Mm -hmm. obviously janet said something to jasmine jasmine said something to zach zach said something to Kristen. and by the time it got to Kristen, it's been all distorted but like she's trying to apologize but no it's not good enough and because everybody's talking this is when jesse slams down his hand and he's like everybody shut the fuck up and listen to michelle yeah like a fucking loser yeah he's so ridiculous like at his sophisticated dinner fucking yeah acting a fool like that and he's like trying to do it to like defend his wife but it's like no you're being an asshole Mm -hmm. and then i think michelle tries to say something in this part because he's like shut the fuck up michelle's like i'm not a racist i'm not a republican or something and then we have Jesse saying Kristen's ruining lives. Trying to ruin their lives. Yeah. Yes. And cuts off Michelle as she's yeah. trying to talk. <laughs> even After though he told he everybody stopped. to shut up so that yeah. she could talk. <laughs> yes. And then he brings up um, Kristen being thrown off of VPR for racism. Right. You're the racist. Yeah. You know, they were just, that was in their back pocket. They yes. were just waiting to put that card on the table. And by the way, fair play. I guess. Yeah. Because the fact of the matter is, that v, uh, Kristen was thrown off of VPR for racist behavior. And I don't yes. know if you know the story of that. I don't know if we talked about we, that. I think we probably have talked about it a little bit. Wasn't it something she said on social media or something? No, actually, her and Stassi, who used to be on Vanderpump Rules, called the police on this girl named Faith. Oh, okay. And she's a person of color. And they called the police and they tried to implicate her in some sort of a robbery or in some sort of a theft, of Whoa. course, which Faith had nothing to do with. And also Faith was like former military, served our country, was kind of a stand-up person, although she did sleep with Jax while oh. Jax was with Britney. So, I mean, how stand-up was she? But 
they did it in a way that put faith at risk as a person mm. of color because police and people of color, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So when this all came out, which I think was shortly after George Floyd, okay. I think faith came out to the media and said, oh, by the way, this happened to me on Vanderpump Rules and it was absolutely racially motivated. And then Stassi and Kristen were fired on the basis of racism. Mm -hmm. And then Jax, who I think was peripherally involved in some way, was not fired immediately, but I think a year later he was let go, although they Ah. did not attribute that to racism directly, although the fandom knew that that was part of the reason. Plus, he's just a toxic asshole. So this is something Kristen actually did yeah okay and so she paid the price as far as she's concerned she lost her job and she lost her livelihood and as Kristen is talking on the couch she's sort of sharing how that all affected her how she was canceled how it was the hardest time of her life and you know she doesn't want to be labeled as anything much less as a racist and the fact that her friends are using the lowest time of her life in a moment like this is really hurtful. Yeah. But I'm like, well, if you're going to sit at somebody's party and you're going to bring up that this person who's hosting the party was called a racist by somebody. Yeah. You're opening the door. Right. To further critique on your nature and your behavior. Like, right. how do you not know that at 40 years old, Kristen? Right. I mean, get it together. I'm like, part. Of, that's why I said earlier in this episode, like, how do you not know the kind of friend group that you're in already? Like, and the kind of scene that you're in. All these people are going to talk shit about you. They're going to throw you under the bus because you're not actually their loyal friend like they don't give a fuck Mm -mm. i don't think anybody actually gives a fuck about anybody same thing on vpr it's kind of like that same dynamic where everybody's out for their own selves Mm -hmm. so i kind of felt for kristen a little bit because she's like sad because she's getting called out for being canceled and she's like i thought i was over this and i've already apologized and i've paid the price and blah 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 but at the same time You fuck around and find out Mm -hmm. you opened your mouth you shouldn't have made that social faux pas no Uh, Yeah, I mean, but like you're creating an environment where that can happen to somebody else. Right, exactly. Who who doesn't, by all intents and purposes, deserve it, unlike you, who actually did something objectively that was quite wrong and seemingly racially motivated. So like why, after you've been through it and allegedly learned from your mistake, like why are you trying to drag somebody else into that situation? Right. And Kristen is upset at this point and she's concerned because she doesn't know whether this is now going to open a can of worms. Right. Is this going to be an ongoing discussion throughout the first season of The Valley? I'm sure that's what she's thinking. And so she's worried about how this is going to impact her and her reputation. Well, like you just said, fuck around and find out. You should just be the last person who should be the bone collector or the bone carrier on issues of racism. Right. Kristen. Exactly. Period, point blank. Period, It should not come from you. Yep. Exactly. So this whole thing is a big old fucking mess. Yeah. (laughs) Everybody's pissed off at each other for all of this. I wonder if we'll see the resolution next episode because it says to be continued. I know, but that's what they said last time and they didn't show us the footage. I swear to God, if we have somebody going to a fucking farmer's market or something in the next episode. And downloading us as to what happened in the rest of that conversation. I'm going to be mad. I really just want Jesse to be physically assaulted. <laughs> <laughs> just like Garrick from know, Seeking Sister. I hate to go there, right? but I just can't stand him so much. He's, he's such a, piece of shit. a misogynist. I know. I he's know. such an awful person to his wife. He's, he's an awful person to women. I know. He's terrible. He's awful. He's just an awful person. Yeah. Oh, God. And I just really hate that he's the one that's taking Kristen to task in a valid way. It should be somebody else with it a little bit be. of integrity, but like, oh, we're here. Whatever. Let's, why don't we talk about it? It's the same show Jax is on too. So yes. it's just like, it, it Did you notice how quiet Jax was? Yeah. Because, and I say again, I think Jax was peripherally involved in the situation or the incident that took Kristen out for racism. Yep. He's got to keep But he's also up. not defending her at all. Because nobody cares about Nia anybody. Nia is the only one. I know. Who's defending her. And like, even if Kristen was super out of line, like if we're in a social situation and somebody's getting dog piled on. Yeah. I'm going to jump in. I don't even care if I don't know you that much. Right. I'm going to jump in and be like, back the fuck off, everybody. You guys are being ridiculous. Right. Nia is the only person besides Luke who does that for Kristen. Jax has known Kristen longer than anybody at that table. I know. And they've shared a lot, including their parts. Ew. He should have said something. Yeah, they should have. But this is L.A. These are fake ass people. Nobody cares about anybody. So, of course, they're not going to say nothing. It was a big shit show. I know. It was a huge ass show. But I enjoyed it. Me too. And we will be back next week (laughs) to continue our coverage of 
the valley. Is there any final thought that you have for this episode? I just hope we get the resolution. I just want to see the rest of the fights. That's all. We do see Michelle and Kristen fighting in a hallway. So I think this issue is not going to be put to rest. I think it's going to stay with us through the entire season. It's probably going to boil over. Like it's just going to keep boiling throughout the season. And I think Janet is just waiting for an opportunity to stick the knife in with Kristen. And honestly, I think Kristen feels the same way about Janet. I don't think Kristen likes Janet at all. Yeah, totally. Yeah, totally. So Good stuff. That makes for a great show. I know. For raccoons I at the bottom it. of a dumpster, honey. Eating so the good. trash. Well, is there anything else that we need to say to these beautiful raccoons, Beatrice? Well, if you love our podcast, you oh, be going to your favorite podcast oh, platform wow. and leave us a glowing five-star review. Thank five. you so much. It really helps us grow the pod. We really appreciate it. And until next time when we return with... Seeking Sister Wife, yeah. which we covered at the beginning of the week, which is really wild and wonderful. Please do not forget that we have nothing but love for you and peace out. Bye. Bye, guys.